I'm going to redo the intro now. Okay. And then in edit, I'll play back the song that we always right. play at the beginning of every show. <laughs> and I'll act surprised, and it'll all be No good. one will ever know. So I'll say yeah. the intro, and then act excited, and then we'll just start talking to these two. Deal. Mm. Live from Carboro, folks, it's the Chris or Jenny Show, featuring Deej. Mm. Woo! And starring Eli Howes. Mm. And Caroline Smith. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. W-C-O-M. <laughs> friends. Uh, good evening, enemies. Good evening, Deej. Good evening, Christopher. Mm. Palpable excitement. Yeah. yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. Man. All right. Thanks for having us. Eli, yeah. welcome. Caroline, welcome. Who, is, who, who are Eli and Caroline? Let's get a little uh, background. I ask myself that every morning, you know. Yeah. Nobody knows. <laughs> so Eli is the fiddle player of the Tan and Sober Gentleman. Okay. Yeah. Bluegrass? What, what genre do you like? You know, Punk pr- grass. pretty much grass. Whatever. Psycho um, yeah. blue. Man, honestly, I kind of love it all. So I was a Scotch-Irish kid. Okay. Uh, totally got into it for um, Celtic fiddle tunes mm-hmm. yes and then have been dragged kicking and screaming into the bluegrass old time all that good stuff but mm-hmm. honestly i love any particularly violin loves to insert itself in places into like is that jazz yeah. is that dubstep why not mm-hmm. you, know? well, you could lob a little violin into any song i think we like to think so caroline smith is here with us tonight as well hello caroline yes i'm caroline and i'm also a stained glass artist mm-hmm. i run a modern stained glass studio called studio adeline Ooh. and you also do some of the graphic work for yeah. the tan and sober gentleman yeah yes. so you know i feel like your one job for health insurance and your one job for the love so love. my health insurance job is i'm a web <laughs> designer so i've been helping out tan and sober with the graphic design <laughs> and whatever needs doing. The hat that mm-hmm. is on my head right now, did you design this? Yeah. I Actually, yo, yeah, we did help to design so, yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. How about that, Deej? Cool. Yeah, every time I wear this hat, we should all give Caroline, like, something. Yeah. And hey, that Squid's hat, uh, I designed that, kind of, well, in, in as much as I Deej, that's not as clip exciting. Art. That's not as exciting. <laughs> so no. the clip art. Is it that easy, Caroline, just to select the clip art? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all clip <laughs> art. <laughs> Uh, I slaved no. for hours. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome, friends. Again, uh, good we're to be so here. glad to have you here. Uh, you live in Carbro because you said you're just a five-minute walk away. Yes. Yeah. 
yes, we literally are right down the way. Can you tell my audience your address and social security number? One hundred percent. So social yeah. first. Stop him. He my do pin it. number <laughs> which is very important to me. Anyone who listens to this show knows that we are huge fans of the Tan and Sober Gentleman. Oh, yeah. Thank you, um, Eli. I've seen you multiple times on stage. <laughs> Most recently at the uh, Hall River Ballroom, it was supposed to be outdoors. Oh, that was fun. The yes. Second. At the Catch Cradle, at the Kraken. No, oh, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, again, it's seriously a pleasure and honor to be here. This is an amazing studio. Well, see what you think in like 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'll be like, mm, my goodness. I Why? Thought, mm, You've been with the Tan and Sober Gentleman for a couple of years since <sighs> the beginning of the band? or You're No. Found, not a founding member. Oh, man. The Tan and Sober Gentleman has such a... Uh, beautiful and scattered history of shenanigans. Yeah. So I don't know if you've ever been regaled with the whole tale. But well, we had no. been, and we had been on the show. I have no idea the kind of things he probably rambled about. I could yeah. only... Oh, Significant I rambling understand. occurred that evening. <laughs> well, good. It's very just uh, ruthlessly efficient um, narrative for me. You know, like a well grabbed. No, so Tan and Sober Gentlemen started out, I believe, as a group called Barleycorn and Rye, and I really hope I'm not spreading any secrets around here. Barleycorn and Rye, dude. Yes, yeah. and it was a... Two of your favorite ingredients. Oh, oh a classic, just uh, American ingredient. You know how you're like, I just yearn for the taste of barley corn and rye mm, um wholesome <laughs> well and i think you know the music reflected that uh no <laughs> i think it was a really wonderful uh trad group it was actually uh ben noblet and um a alan bunch s. of equipment alan s best well then i think alan was the first person to be dragged in yeah i okay. believe dragged and in. then uh, i like how he says dragged in the story that i've always been regaled with was uh kind of slowly but surely uh i wouldn't say edged out but just like to play faster and faster you know with increasing its shenanigans and i think that it was a um not to be negative but a slightly more uh normal folk ensemble if that makes sense the, mm. the barley corn and rye, barley corn and, rye. Okay. and tan and sober gentlemen started off 100 percent as a joke that was uh, somebody who uh. saw the barley corn and rye group uh. and of course i think they played too fast and had too much fun mm. yes and they were like you know what you should be called the tan and Sober." and then ben went that's hilarious that's it that's wonderful because yeah. we're none of the above exactly yeah. so i came in i actually replaced uh the old lead singer there's a fellow named michael who is a wonderful deviant who then went up to get his doctorate of of, uh, oh my goodness, I believe it was fancy. Yeah, very fancy, um, mm. some type of biology. At this year, University of North Carolina or somewhere else? He went up north, and you're, I really should know this because I actually like Michael quite a lot, even though I have one of those like kind of hate friendships where I'm like, oh. Oh, those are the best, aren't yeah, they, Yeah, you know? Now, Deej, why do you name me when you talk about a hate? <laughs> just, yeah. and, the, and the love is also love, important. Yeah. Right, you know, right. that's a little bit. But, um, yeah, so I came in actually at the same time as Tucker the banjo player. Um, right, yeah. And singer. Mm-hmm. Tucker. Um, oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, I would say lead singer. It's such a talent, that one is. Lead um, Oh, lead male yes. vocal, lead male vocal. Also, well, we're going to get into that too. Critical distinction. W- the, the loss of will um, mm-hmm. has forced Tucker and and uh, Courtney to step up in the vocals oh, department. I I'm going to spread so many stories. Yeah, no, Dude, just going to got an hour. Don't so hold back. <laughs> no. We need ratings. Don't oh, hold back. Well, mm, mm. the scandal. Now, can uh, a fiddle player sing at while playing? So that's actually a great question, and you know, there goes my ruthlessly pointed narrative. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Yes, it feels like you're breaking your brain in two parts yeah, and getting yeah. better at it. It's actually really funny. Alan and I will sit around playing tunes, and I'll try to just carry a polite conversation with him, but it ends up being, do you know what time is? And it's like, oh, man, it's... But it is interesting. Words are hard. There's also some really cool stuff happening with uh, electric violins and uh, hands-free suspension systems. Yeah. Uh, wood violins makes a really cool instrument called the Viper. Okay. And it actually allows you to totally free up your head um, and sing a lot. And oh, wow. there's a couple groups like... Uh, Andrew Bird and Kishibashi, I think I was uh, yammering about, who also do a really wonderful job um, playing violin and singing. Sometimes at the same time, you can do some simpler chords or backing yeah. stuff. Okay. You can also use a loop pedal to kind of, you know, yeah, gotcha. a little cheeky. Yeah. And, uh, look, I love loop pedals, okay? I love all of the, all of the technology. Now, now, do you oh, find yeah. the, the whole thing under the chin, does that get in the way of having proper singing mechanics oh, or uh, very much so okay um the world of violin is fascinating to have proper violin pro, like classical that's true because you kind of have to do one of these things it's oh, weird you're supposed to look miserable mm. oh no i remember there's anytime you smile a classical teacher is like i thought i drank <laughs> that thought might be the name of the show you're supposed to look miserable. you're supposed to look miserable yeah. you know and so even just to smile and to kind of brighten up yeah um ben showed me a wonderful fiddle player called dan crenshaw who just terrible tone 
Um, but man, he has fun. He jumps around. And honestly, yeah. that was really cool to see. Very influential because it's, I think, one of the most important things about any, I would honestly say any art, but music is just having fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that joy. Yeah. And I think that it's something that fiddle does uh, really well, particularly opposed to violin. Yeah. Because particularly, it's like, you know. Eh, you got to smile. Well, yeah. the lead singer and founding member in Old Crow Medicine Show mm. plays violin while singing. Mm-hmm. Catch the core? Is that yes, the name? Yes, I think so. Yeah. By the way, after I had been on, I contacted that band to say I thought you guys should open for them. Oh, man. That'd they're be nice. A good, that'd be a good gig. I you're, think. A, you're a nice person who does Honestly, I think they should be open for You're a very nice but, man, Christopher. But I love yeah. OCMS as well. Those are two of my favorite bands, Tan and Sober and, and, and yeah, OCMS. Lovely. So, Any tips for any aspiring fiddle singers at home to Oh, work man. On? Honestly, just keep trying it. Keep just picking. Just do it. Keep, like... It's going to sound silly, and I think there's a lot with, uh, particularly with like violin and fiddle, that's just rather tricky yeah. um, and doesn't come immediately or quickly. Yeah, they're kind of different parts of the rhythmic system or something. And it does feel like you're breaking your brain, but mm-hmm. I think it's really important to like get comfortable with that feeling of discomfort, of yeah. learning new things, mm. and just getting excited about like, it will click. Um, yeah, okay. It will take an annoying amount of time, but honestly, the more fun you have while like, talk to your buddy. I, uh, I talk to our dog a lot, mm. mostly to tell him that I'm not, in fact, in pain. I'm just playing violin. No. <laughs> and everything's, everything's fine. Well, it's funny that you asked for tips, Deej, because Eli is also a uh, teacher. Oh. He's a yes, thank teacher. you. I've uh, seen your flyers around town oh, for many years. I appreciate that. I'm actually really excited because I'm... Uh, Going into a bit of a new phase, and I'm opening up some student time and um, yes. contract time. So honestly, anybody who not to shamelessly plug, shamelessly plug. Oh, there you go. Well, I'm back here. Oh, thank you for twisting. By the way, this show brought to you by Lawson Hammock, the greatest mm-hmm. camping hammock ever oh my made. Gosh, That's I my love hammocks. Okay, please. Wait, really? I make a camping hammock. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna go out and get one of your hammocks. We have a patent on the arch pole and the spreader bar design. It allows mm. you to no, sleep on your side. What? No, I'm a side sleeper. Yeah. So oh. like, you know how most hammocks are like a banana. Well, like, 100%. You get tacoed, but it's, it's kind of comforting. It's fine for reading a book or taking a nap, but if you really want to sleep there... We There's have, a swaddling aspect we, to it. We make a camping hammock. You will not swaddle, my friend. Mm. But enough with my plug. How about back to your plug? Anywho, yes. Yeah. So Eli Howes is now a teacher. Well, you've been a teacher for years. I've seen your flyers for a couple years. Um, no, <laughs> I, uh, well, I'm honestly just really expanding uh, my student time and also just any you know anybody who needs any violin on some tracks, recording time, or wants some ambient... Uh, he winked, by the way. I, I did. To the folks at home. I'm a compulsive winker. It's, yeah, he does a lot. It's my choice. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. I've been really lucky to have a couple wonderful students yeah. recently. And um, honestly, it's a ton of fun. Did the flyers work? Like, what's the best way for you to find students? Um, you know, that's a great question. Yeah. You know I mean? Honestly, the flyers were great. I think I also, uh, look, I love posting on social media and creating content. It's mm-hmm. what is it? on uh, EliHouse.com. Oh, uh, yeah. www.elihouse. Oh, my gosh. Mad Fiddler 828. Mad Fiddler, yes. Uh, nice. Also, it I is. Like Caroline with the plug. So <laughs> nice. Hanging out with designers is game changing. Yeah. Man. They're a powerful, wonderful, terrifying people. Yeah. Who, uh, clearly. I don't oh. understand why they're not more villains in movies that are designers. Oh, because I feel like they could mess. They're always hackers. That'd be but great. Designers <laughs> can mess you up so much worse. Yeah. Also, the dungeons would look way better. <laughs> just the, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So you have students. Mm-hmm. You're booking time. Do you just teach from your house apartment? We we teach from our house. We've got a, a wonderful spot that. Um, nice. Also, we've been super lucky to have a, a nice yard, which mm. really came in clutch a couple it's a years ago. Great place to play. Mm-hmm. And I um. I feel like I probably have a reputation amongst my neighbors now. There's one who walks by and will uh, tell me when I'm not practicing enough, which is a really good oh, reminder. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. She'll be like, I haven't seen you on the porch. <laughs> What's going on? I'm Most like, oh, neighbors, right. they complain about you playing too much music. It's great when you live in a neighborhood where they complain about that's you playing a lot of music. It is. That's a, a such a car bro thing. Yeah. But like, I'm one of those people who I just forget that uh, other people can hear me. And then I'm yeah. like, oh. Right. I love mm. it. Uh. Now, Eli, we've had uh, a couple other fiddle players on the show before, and uh, I asked, uh, what's the difference between a violin and a fiddle? <laughs> and one of them said, a violin has strings, oh my God. a fiddle has strings. I was literally thinking about, like, I was wondering earlier today, because I was like, oh, I'm really excited for tonight. And I was like, I bet you 10 bucks somebody's going to ask a question. So yeah. A yeah. And that, oh, I try to preempt that joke. Mm. It's one of the most common strings and strings. He gets strings. it a lot. It's a good one. It gets funnier every time. It, 
It does, you know. Uh, tragedy plus time equals comedy. Yeah. Um, I, do you want a slightly nerdy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technical oh, answer. Yeah. Okay, because like, nerdy answer. Man, I can nerd out about. You do wear stuff. a shirt on stage that says "Book Nerd." I love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Okay. All I'm right. actually really excited to read my book soon. Um, but uh, <laughs> I also just love, man, nerding out about. Uh, Celtic tunes or do it, brother. Do it, man. But uh, violin and a fiddle. Um, I like to tell people it depends on who's paying. Mm-hmm. And then that really is the big. That's a good there one. is no physical difference. Okay. So uh, the instrument, same technique. There might be a couple of uh, friends listening who are like, "My God, spreading misinformation." Mm-hmm. There is one slight physical difference that fiddle players will tell you about. Which okay. um, do you know the bridge of the instrument? Yeah. Normally, a violin has a, a pretty specific uh, curve. It's a curvature to the um, to the bridge, and that allows you to separate all the strings and play one individually, essentially. Okay. Um, fiddle, as opposed to violin, is a lot more concerned with playing multiple strings at the same time. Okay. So, like, not only double stops with just two strings, but, like, three strings at a time or four strings wow. at a time if you're wailing. So what they'll do is they will file the angle of the bridge arc down. Oh, okay. Cool. So a lot of right. fiddles will have flatter bridges and lower action, so the strings are closer to the fingerboard. Gotcha. Um, Deeds loves low action. Same, uh... <laughs> oh, man. I feel that. Same, uh, uh, uh string t- notes. G-D-A-E. Yeah, whatever. boom. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. Now, now, when you're playing Celtic music, are the guitars in dad gad? Is that a thing? Really depends on the player. Okay. Um, a lot of the times, yeah. And it's okay. really fun. I've been super lucky to get to play some uh, extended range violins. Mm. I am um, finishing up working at a, an electric violin shop. That's a wonderful spot. Mm. And there's a lot of extended range violins, five or six or even seven string fiddles. Wait, what shop are you talking about? The electric violin shop. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, it's, right. it's great. Honestly, a lovely place. If anyone has any need, you should... Should call them. I'm aware of High Strung in Durham mm-hmm. and then the one in Pittsburgh. Oh, those are both wonderful. What's this the is, name of the one in Pittsburgh? Oh, my God. I think it's the Fiddle Shop. The Fiddle I Shop. I want to oh. say. Wow, what a creative name. I, well, look, man. <laughs> mine is called The Electric Violin Shop, so I can't oh, give this anybody. Is your shop. Yeah, no, it's. Well, it's not mine. I mean, I'm very fortunate to work there, um, and yeah. I know the lovely people who. Where, where is it? Own it? It's right in Durham. Whoa. I'm kind of the Lowe's Grove area. The okay. Electric. Oh. Right off exit 278. Let's, let's plug oh. it, baby. The oh, electric. it's great. The Electric Violin Shop. Yeah. Uh, they're dot net, wonderful. maybe. I don't know. Oh, no, dot, dot com. Org. Okay. Oh, dot com. Okay. We do most of our stuff online. But it's really cool, just extended range fiddles. Having the C string of a viola or even going lower, yeah. uh, it's very fun. And there's some really fun drone work you can do, yeah. particularly with like the folk. So you're working at this shop. You're teaching lessons. You're performing gigs with Tan and Sober Gentlemen. Is that just pretty much your whole life at this point? Is Are you able to... We should have in a couple adventures. I think um, yeah. it is really nice getting to hang out with, uh, as I said before, cool, talented uh, designers. So Caroline and I have been up to a lot of uh, – we've been raising that dog lately, nice. which is a blast and a half. Yeah. We do a lot of festivals together. We do a lot of festivals together, which is a ton of fun. Caroline, what are your role in the festivals? So I do modern stained glass, and so usually I'm a vendor. So mm-hmm. I've done – we've done the Eno Festival together. Great fest. We're going to do Bristol Rhythm and Roots in September. Nice. So fun. And uh, Saturday in Saxbaha, we just did together. Mm-hmm. So you all, so you make stained glass mm-hmm. um, in your in my somewhere studio, studio yeah. and then you sell it at festivals, etc. At festivals online. So well, what's the, if we're plugging, we're plugging. Adeline. Oh yeah, com. Studio Adeline. Say it again. I just stepped on it. Oh, uh, studioadeline dot com or no dot glass. Sorry, mm-hmm. dot glass. Oh, that's even better. Glass. Oh, I didn't know that. Studio Adeline. out of line dot glass. Adeline. Adeline. Ad, like, like Caroline, Adeline. but Adeline, A-D-E? Yeah. Okay. Yes. The logo is a cat. How much more can I butcher this plug? <laughs> yeah. And on Instagram, we'll Studio Adeline. Studio underscore Adeline. Mm-hmm. I want nice. a piece of that stained glass. I oh, love it. My mom so was a cool. big stained glass like type artist. Yeah. And yeah, was, like you put it in a window. It was really popular. Yeah. And then I think it kind of died back, and it's, yeah. it's having a renaissance. So. You're bringing it back, Caroline. Yeah, well, there's a lot of other young, talented artists all yeah. across the U.S. Um, and in some other countries, too. But the U.S. is really carrying stained glass now. Caroline, it's super it, interesting. Caroline's the but, best. No, come on. Where do you find that you get most of your sales? At a music festival? At a farmer's market type uh, thing? Online, at, usually. Yeah. Yeah, because I can leave that running all the time. You can't beat online, Deej. Nope. Yeah, just can't beat it. It's where yeah. I keep all my stuff. Lovely is, to meet people at festivals and to see like that real time feedback. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just hear what people say. So it's, it's now, really do you do custom stuff for uh, what, what, what kind I of designs do, do you do that sell um, well? I do for weddings. Uh, so I just did like some arch 
Like yeah. when you get married and you have like the arch behind you, like mm-hmm. pieces that'll hang there okay. or um, things that'll be like on the high table, like at the reception. So I do all kinds of stuff. I'm I'm down for whatever. <laughs> Love it. But it's we, very modern. We yeah. want to post some pictures of your stuff on our Facebook group. Oh, cool. yes. I was going to say festivals are a lot of fun because it's a way easier to yell at somebody yeah. oh, in nice. real life. I've taken to, uh, Caroline is very kind and let me just hang out in her booth playing music and yelling, do you know how to make a house a home? Which I think is a great sales pitch. Uh, artisanal stained glass. So you'll just play and then, and then yeah, yell at strangers yeah, and it's, it's a you really fun combo for me. You and Alan had a great jam session yeah. in the men's room. So I'd love oh to bring that back. What's the jam? You yell at strangers and it's... Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you know, I actually wrote this one. Wrote this one for Caroline a while ago. Oh. work and we went to the beach yeah i did not expect to have such a good monday and i am really trying to write more tunes i love it it's really fun that yeah. was fantastic oh thanks you can tear it up you're kind of a large human being you're, a big, you're a big man and you're playing a tiny instrument which Indeed. makes you look bigger my entire life people i'd be like oh yeah i actually uh, i play music and they yeah. give you the kind of once over and they're like Base hmm. because no, not quite. I thought Ben was short, and he comes in here and Ben towers over short. me. The Mohawk makes him even taller. He's really short in real life. He's but, deeply but, insecure. But he, <laughs> <laughs> but you just get up there. I mean, you're just a large man, but you just kind of are weaving through and just so delicately playing this instrument so beautifully. I it's an interesting look. Really appreciate that. Yeah. I'm very good at tripping on my friends yeah. um, and tripping others. Honestly, it has been a really nice quest. I am a semi-professional sloucher. Oh, I've been great at slouching my whole life. Yeah. Violin teachers do not like it when you say Oh, well, they don't normally make violin stands for six foot four individuals. And so growing up, I had a bit of a, you know, and I just, you know, when you just have too much self-confidence. Um, but I, uh, I've been on a quest, honestly, to fix my po- posture the last couple of years. And it's been really nice. Just huh. standing up straight feels great, I got to mm. say. That's um, beautiful. Any tips for the slouchers at home? It is really funny. A great way to wig out strangers is to loudly talk about fixing your posture in public, and you'll just see people <laughs> shift. There I go. There I go. There are lumber. You used to work at uh, Open Eye Cafe. Yes. Oh, I was wondering. Yeah. Indeed. I was a, a barista and coffee kid for a while. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. And oh, man, you guys want any fun facts about a single origin shade grown at yeah. altitude? Did you play your fiddle in there? Dish, dish. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think if I ever actually played in Open Eye. I I don't think so. Honestly, I have uh, always struggled with being a bit self-conscious playing out in public. And fun fact about Caroline and her entire uh, family clan of wonderful individuals. I remember we were uh, hanging out in the early days, and I was like, well, it's always a little nerdy. I, not only do I play Irish music, I listen to it for fun. Mm. Just trad Irish tunes I think are groovy. And just without a beat, she's like, oh, yeah, my entire family plays Irish music. That's um, fantastic. Wonderful musician herself. If what do you play, sense. Caroline? Oh, I play the piano. Mm. But mm. we have actually started an Irish session at the Bell Tree. Oh, yes. Which oh. is every second Monday the of the second month. second Monday of the month. Here we go. That has been a blast and a half. Yes, yeah. that has been a blast. That's a party. The so Bell can... Tree, kind of a hidden bar mm-hmm. behind a card uh, wash. Best lemon drops in town. Uh, right on the edge of Carbro and Chapel Hill. So we wanted to get a session going. So Eli and Alan and myself. Kind Alan of, S. Best? Yes. Alan S. Best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is best. We uh, threw up the flyers all over Carbro. And every second Monday, we have a bunch of people come play Irish tunes for hours mm-hmm. and hours until they kick us out. And man, it's been fun. It's been really cool to see it kind of grow into something that's uh that's awesome legit jamming oh man it's a good time yeah caroline you were so 
so help. It's so nice hanging out with good people um, <laughs> because you're just like, man, I really want to do this. And they're like, cool. Yeah, we can. We can actually, we can do that. Let's I wonder see. if anybody's ever said that about you or me, Deej. No. No, I don't no. think so. Man, think that'd so. be a first. <laughs> Caroline, it's so nice being on a radio show with good people. Like mm. oh. 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 All right. All right. It feels Moving great. On. feels well, great. Thanks. So is this a jam <laughs> session and we can roll in with their their fiddle? And oh, yes. Join? Okay. It doesn't have to be a fiddle. Um, we it can be anything. We have concertinas. Uh, I usually put my piano out and leave it. We have flutes. Bring a bow on. Sitting bring around. A, oh. I'm yeah. a bass player. I could come play some. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Do I have to tune to Dad Gad or no. uh, you understand or Dad? G- any notion of gatekeeping makes my skin itch. Please bring any any and all jam. sundry come instruments. Jam. Okay. Jams are for everyone. Um, but you gotta have. It's gotta be a place with a piano, right? Not everyone has a piano, so mm. that's key. Yeah. Oh, well, we can sneak in a you, keyboard. You can, yeah. Oh, you, you yeah. love I, a I keyboard agree. in and out. Oh, you better believe it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because one of the great things about being a violin player is it's very easy to move around. It really is. I remember I used Sam's to... bass weighs 40 pounds. Oh, yeah. and Tucker built a beautiful banjo case that weighs about as much as a small child. Um, and it's fun. Uh, <laughs> it very like a Very sturdy. <laughs> um, you know, I have had a, a long-running guilt complex around just having the lightest instrument ever. It's yeah. so nice. But you could travel. Yeah, you can travel. I can bring around. But I normally do help lug yeah. whatever, you know, like, I'll be like, please come on. Right, I'll help. I've got all my stuff already. I'll help. But it is really nice. I think I'm able to squeak in under the... I think even guitar can be tricky to fly with and do other things, but yeah. I can kind of... So we had Ben on the show, Ben Noblet, April of 2021. So sorry. And I was asking him about how we put the band together. Mm. And he mentioned uh, Eli. Yep. Oh, um, no. So I want to I wanna play the whole song now, though. So we played Rabbit in the Log. Oh, yeah. Rapping in a log has an Irish song worked into it for the fiddle solo. Oh, yeah. So I want everyone to hear that song. That's going to be our next song we're going to play. And then afterwards, I want to hear what Ben and I had to say about Eli. It was awful. You might want to cover your ears. I'm already done. Hold on tight, folks.
good Lord. Where'd you find that guy, man? How he can tear it, it up. Word of mouth. He's from Burke County, North Carolina, so up in the hills, and he learned his stuff from people like Jane McMorrin yeah. and all the, the Swannanoa types. I don't know who first gave me his number, but yeah. when I was first putting this lineup together, um, someone told me that, you know, he'd do just fine. And I'm, I sent him a text and said, you know, I got this band, like, this is what we do, and I was wondering if you might be interested in maybe picking with us sometime. And he just texted back, I've been waiting my whole life for this. Oh, my goodness. Oh. He is so <laughs> is good. Perfect. DJ at fiddle, what do you think? Yeah, that's a fiddle. That's, that's no violin, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I got to say, I got to call Ben Noblet out on something, because I swear, he's one of those guys, oh, so gruff and loves the black coffee and the lagers or the, you know, the stuff. He is one of the sweetest guys. Um, very nice individual. And I know this because at our house, yeah. I have multiple notes from him, yeah. including a picture, which he signed, saying very nice things. Nice. Mm, he's a nice. very nice young man. Right. Okay. You see uh, the you see the Jack Daniels on stage. You see the buck knife. You see, he's you see lovely. Little, you see the mohawk. And you oh, think, this guy wants to beat me oh, up. He's actually he, a sweetheart. He loves a cup of coffee and a paper and a yeah. good conversation. Um, I was very surprised. I had him in here. How? Because uh, he, he is kind of the front man on stage as oh, far yeah. as interacting with the audience. He was super shy in here. Did oh, you yeah. were on the phone? I was, yeah. During the pandemic well, times. Yeah. I heard Tan Sober before I ever joined the band. I went yeah. up to the Poor House in Raleigh. Mm, uh, lovely great venue. Spot. Yeah. And I was just, I was having one of those nights where I was like, I'm just going to go lay under a bunch of blankets. My um, lovely buddies and housemates were like, come on, St. Patrick's Day. You mm. play fiddle. Let's go out and, you know, <laughs> have a little life. Carpe diem. A little crack. jazz. Yeah, get the crack. And I was like, oh, grumble, grumble. And of course, it took us longer than we thought to get up to the poorhouse. And by the time we got there, I think it was one of those wonderful, like, uh, local band, local beer. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Played at those. Um, they're super fun. And yeah. I think it was a really popular night. So it was sold out. Mm. We were already up and rolling. And I was like, uh, and I just was walking around and I heard just wafting through like there just some uh very enthusiastic uh slightly janky celtic celtic music and i was like what what is this and i stumbled around there's this wonderful little kind of cobblestone neighborhood i should know what it's called uh, right around the corner from the poor house and tan and sober was on like our four of a very long sweaty just tire just some gig marathon for, gig oh yeah. yeah i had no idea what the context was it was for some like apartment complex or something yeah there was you know the rest of the crowd that was there was drunk and sweaty, and Tan and so was just, oh my God, this. We were singing South Australia, or they were singing South Australia. And just real briefly, I was like, that was awesome. And so when Ben hit me up, I, so I have always been told to uh, slow down and stop moving as much uh, by a mm -hmm. lot of violin uh, people, which is good advice for the most part, but I've just never listened to it. Yeah. Um, and it was really nice. I remember the first Tan and Sober rehearsal. They were talking about a couple of fiddle tunes. I was like, oh, yeah, I already know all this. We got this. And they were like, what? I was like, oh, yeah, those are some of my favorites. And I think I managed to sneak in uh, a tune called The Reconciliation to Rabbit in the Log. Um, yeah, it's a fiddle solo. It's played way too fast. Uh, way faster than any. It's really fun. Every time I show uh, an Irish player, they're like, my yeah. God, man. Yeah, what but it's a done? common session tune, so mm -hmm. if you are at like a trad session, chances are you're going to oh, yeah. get into it. Yeah. It will be much slower. No one should probably play it that fast. But everything you all play is pretty fast, though. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. Yeah. I know I've got a problem, but um, I love Celtic music. I love fast music. I love punk music, and I never thought I would get a chance to play this kind of music. I've yeah. been super fortunate to play in a couple uh, indie groups and yeah. even play with um, some rock violin and experiment with that. But I. Uh, I don't know. I never thought that like Celtic rock could be in the cards. Mm. And so I was so excited. But I remember making a joke about, oh, you know, I can be a little awkward, even though you could never tell. Because, you know, <laughs> grew up homeschooled. And there was just a moment where the entire room of like seven people for us, and they were like, oh, yeah, so do we. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no, everybody. Like everybody in Tennessee. Tucker, no. Courtney, oh, no. no. And Jake was public schooled. Yeah. Um, but the rest were my friends from homeschool. Uh huh. Caroline actually grew up with all of the tan and sober kids. Ben in, really? Uh, mm hmm. So you grew up in I'm like the Saxapaha area? Uh, Hillsborough. Hillsborough? Yeah. Did you know each other before you were in the band? We, we met or? through Tan and Sober. We, well, okay. Or maybe. We don't remember where we met. Yeah, yeah. We were like, we lived in the same dorm in undergrad and like kind of passed by a lot, you know? What we're school? like, uh, oh, Unk. 
Heard, heard of it. it heard of it. Yeah. Heard of it. It's a decent <laughs> program down there. Yeah. yeah. Every good things. I would. I would never slander my. Uh, what is it called alma mater? Mm-hmm. I'm, look, man, I'm homeschooled. I'm bad at. You did graduate? Yeah, I did. I did school. <laughs> yeah. <Could be> worse. <laughs> no, look, Caroline, what was your undergrad? What did you uh, study? I did journalism, nice. multimedia journalism, mm-hmm. yeah. and TV stuff. Cool. Yeah, it was good. How did you learn to get into stained glass? I'm going all over the place oh, tonight because I can't play music. So I was a designer and an illustrator before, and I was kind of like looking for a medium to really sink into and saw some stained glass on Pinterest and I was like, that's my thing. I don't know how to do it. I'll figure it out. Figure it out. Ordered it, watched a bunch of YouTube videos, just crazy lady alone in my house for hours on end because pandemic, what else yeah. can I do? And got a whole art form out of it. You are so good at teaching yourself I stuff. It's I awesome love when people just figure things out. It's I've so never... cool. Yeah. When we were looking for instructors i said what Mm -hmm. about this guy and she was like well i wanted to be a girl yes is that offensive or do you understand or how how does that make you feel oh not at all man i think that like she's she was seven at the time i've worked in a lot of different places i was a uh a crisis counselor for a while i worked in a, a crisis hotline and i think that particularly when it comes to Education, learning things, and being vulnerable, you should be around somebody you're comfortable yeah. with in an environment you're comfortable yeah. with. There's no reason I think that, like, you know, I talk a lot about, like, the, I think the spirit of fun. Yeah. Making sure that you feel comfortable and that it's a space that you kind of want to be in. Yeah. Oh, that is so, that makes sense to me. But I think if, and I was like, just do two or three lessons. And if, you, if it doesn't work out, we'll find somebody else. And I think it was just the age. And I think if you guys started working together, she would totally love you. Oh, yeah. But, but it was just like a girl boy. It's helpful to just shop around a little bit and try mm-hmm. different teachers and see who yeah. you click with. Like I've had a bunch of different teachers, you know, over different seasons of yeah. my musical education yeah so, yeah it's about and we got extremely lucky though so i think you know her first violin teacher was waverly leonard oh waverly's wonderful I think you know waverly yes uh she was in the carolina songbirds mm-hmm. stage she sat right there and they played and oh the that's played awesome here. uh great way to get my daughter into the instrument in the first place she was her teacher for about six or seven months and then she moved to florida waverly mm-hmm. did uh, to pursue uh, being a doctor, which I was like, come on, we need more, we need more fiddle players. Come on, do we really need more doctors? Mm, fiddle too players many, with too many doctors. doctors. I'm just that's, kidding. Mm, that's and a then, so thing. then she moved on, and now we have a wonderful teacher, Yolanda Morell. I don't know if she rings a bell for you. The name but, uh, is familiar, but awesome not... teacher, and she lives like a mile away from me. But I oh, did try to get you a student, Eli. Oh no, I, man, I deeply appreciate that, and. You know, that's a that's a wonderful sentiment, yeah. Wonderful spirit, yeah. The the whole boy girl thing is funny. Oh, for, uh, and, and what was that website again? Oh, www.elihowellsviolin.com. Elihowellsviolin.com. That you? is my name, even though technically my name is David, but I don't talk about. My that. mom just texted me. Yolanda taught my brother and sister. No way. Yeah. What's your mom's name? Uh. Well, my mom's name is Katie. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Sorry, we can't They're play all music. Listening. Yeah, Yolanda's great. I remember her. Yolanda, she that's my daughter. When I was seven, though, I Ooh. wanted to play fiddle. And she was like, You're too wild, so I switched to piano. But she yeah. taught my brother and sister, and she, they're pretty good. Now. She is my daughter's teacher now, and this is huge. So, um, Waverly was, you know, super cool. Like, mm-hmm. really made Maggie excited about the instrument. And then Yolanda is continuing on with really good training, and she lives five minutes from my house. That's really nice. As a parent, that's very crucial thing well it's also really nice to like particularly early on to establish some of that really good core yeah music. she like, likes it she played her first um i knew that name was familiar mm-hmm. yeah Amazing. she played maggie my daughter played old joe clark in a uh, yeah in her first violin oh, uh, recital man. a couple so months fun. ago Oh, it sounded just like that. Yeah, actually, it might have even been a little bit better. Maggie's performance. Oh my gosh, I bet. <laughs> you know what? I'll never forget my first performance ever. I was two weeks into learning the violin. I think I was eight or nine. Nice. Oh, I got up on a that church stage. And yeah. I mm. Showed off my my bow hold and I played the A and the E string and I took a bow. Wow. It's a thunderous applause. <laughs> is this your first and only instrument? I actually I dabble in a lot of things. Weird thing about violin is you have to dedicate so much uh, time to it. Mm. But all of a sudden you kind of look up and you're. Uh, like you know 16 18 and all your friends are playing three different instruments and like two of them are cool and you're like i, I thought we were just doing one i yeah. thought we were all just concert Come yeah. on, guys. but what happened it's been really fun i've been uh dabbling a lot honestly in some uh bass boron and uh mandola or bazooki nice. Mm, nice. nice um which are i don't know why i decided to pick a bunch of instruments you have to explain yeah, yeah. Uh, which is fun because i gotta be honest i haven't heard of two of those that's totally cool yeah which two 
<laughs> the latter two. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That's um, the Irish drum. Yes, the Boron is the... This thing? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Ah, gotcha. Um, it's the, the big... Folks at home, dudes. thing where your, where your wrist is all, uh, all going bonkers. It's all wiggly. And, yes, yeah. your wrist, your yeah. wrist is there. Yeah. You're like, yeah. what? what's that? Um, it, it sounds good, but... And the bazooki is uh, originally a Greek instrument that mm. um, became really popular in Irish music uh, a while ago. Yeah. And it's kind of the uh, guitar that has the wide, round, teardrop-shaped body. I love oh. it. Um, one of the coolest things I've ever seen on a stage. So, like I said, I've seen Tan and Sober four times, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. and several of them have been um, just incredible gigs. The first one after the pandemic at Kraken, mm-hmm. uh, the Be Loud oh, Sophie that was, was that awesome. Was... But the gig that the, the thing that I saw that on stage that was so awesome, you guys played the Catch Cradle Back Room. It was a CD or album release party yeah, yeah, yeah. roughly a year ago, maybe a little bit less than that. Oh, you're damn. jamming, you're playing, you're performing, packed back room, and then out comes a marching band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Deej, no. it was so awesome. It was like a clown car thing because the um, there's no room behind the stage, oh, and here comes like 15 people. The guy's got the big drum. That was awesome, Eli. If Ben Nob would ever heard that, he's gonna be like, yes. Uh, um, yeah. So much validation. Yeah. Oh, I told him how awesome it was that oh, night. But. Uh, that was fun. It is, it's a cool thing to be able to work in a traditional Highland piping group. Oh, my goodness. To your uh, shtick. You know, it's mm. fun. It's didn't so ex- cool. Didn't expect this life. I'm not going to lie. So if I haven't said this already, my favorite band of all time is the Pogues. Oh, yes. And you guys are obviously hev- heavily influenced by them. Oh, One of the cooler things that's ever had in my life. Them. We're actually about to go uh, do a wee tour of Ireland soon, and I'm super excited about it. We're talking about that next. Oh, beautiful. Well, so it was one of the first times, and we got to play at this pub called The Celt. Um, and there was the, the pub owner was like, oh, you got to come into this back room. We're going to make one of our staff. I introduced Ben Noblet to The Celt. Yes! That, yes! Uh, Caroline and I actually... I feel like Caroline's the most important member. You have no idea. Show, she gentlemen. so is, and I would like that on record. Um, Mom, did you, hear, did you hear that? She is Katie? so important. It does so many different things. Um, she does it all. Really does. Um, and it's been really... You've been... Your story. Rocking the jam sessions. Oh, right. Anyway. <laughs> but um, we made this video where a, an Irish step dancer, we played a trad tune. We played it way too fast. And the dancer... Knows, and it started, weirdly enough, trending in Ireland. Not only Ireland, but it was on like the Irish time, the, the examiner. Nice. Um, they picked it up. Shane McGowan commented on that video. Yeah. Mm. And he said nothing about the music. Uh, and I, I have such a bone to pick with him now because mm. technically I know that Shane McGowan, but he was just like, ah, I love the Celt. I'll Great text him right guy. now. Oh, please do. Uh, Deej, get, wait, our phones don't work. Uh, yeah, if our phone worked, I'd get him on the phone. Uh, right? uh, we blew it. Yeah. yeah. Be like this one fiddle player. Um, to be fair, Shane's maybe not all there in the, in the mental faculty. Oh, yeah. And I feel that. No, this yeah. is a complete and utter joke, but yeah, I no, was I just it. like, I, love it. I was like, dang. You can't say because you want to be like, why, yes. Yeah. So and so did comment on my video and look at this yeah. name drop. But it's like, no. Yeah. He only it's commented on. Purposeful. I feel like there's got to yeah. be some. It's fine. I've moved on. So <laughs> the original, the banjo player in the Pogues was Jem Finer. Yeah, yeah. And we've had him on the show. That's yeah. so cool. He videoed in from uh, London. I think he lives in Yeah, London. he was in England. Yeah. But, uh, I think it wasn't London, though. I think it was. Uh, it's up north, wasn't it? I don't know. But I'm more excited. We bumped. We had Shane lined up for tonight, but we bumped him to get you two in. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good. I would say good, but as, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> play something. Do you want to play something else? Yeah. Okay. You want something faster or slower? Fast. Okay. I want um, to feel like I'm at a tan and sober show. Oh, fantastic. It is funny that I actually have been really getting into slip jigs. If you ever want to have a very nerdy conversation about the subgenres of Celtic tunes. <laughs> Kelly, what do you think? Well, if you want to feel like you're at a tan sober show, maybe like a fast reel or yeah, something. Yeah, fast reel. I got, all right, this one, technically, I think it's about the Irish potato famine, but it's really hmm. fun. Um, <laughs> that's a fun topic. Yeah. It is, yeah. Very nice. 
nice. It is really fun. I thought I played fast. Every once in a while, you'll bring a tune to Tan and Sober Gentleman. Mm. You're like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Have you thought about faster? Yeah. It's like, oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. We've ruined some really wonderful tunes that way. Yeah. Eli, I want to ask you about uh, your songwriting process. Do you, oh. do you start with a feeling or an idea, or do you start out with a chord structure? How do, how do you write your songs? You know, I'm actually still experimenting with as many different ways of writing as possible. I found for myself just... Um, Getting into a space of accepting all nonsense that comes into your head, mm -hmm. playing anything. Ooh, I, like that. I actually do. I sometimes try to invoke a specific feeling. Okay. I like to sit outside or listen to the stuff around me mm -hmm. and try to play something that feels fitting. Okay. I love playing when it's raining. Yeah. Or playing with this, like, I don't know. I think trying to invoke a mood can be really fun mm -hmm. right. and uh, trying to bring that forward. I feel like I want to try. I've, I've known some people to write to prompts, mm -hmm. but it was really nice. I got to. Um, take a class with I think I mentioned Liz Carroll recently Caroline actually got me to go to the Swannanoa Gathering because she's wonderful um, which is a lovely it's a Celtic camp I've been to a camp recently it was yeah. the best yeah, yeah. Awesome. Uh, at Swannanoa up near Asheville in Warren Wilson mm -hmm. I'm from Morganton North Carolina Morganton um, so it's down the mountain from Asheville right. but uh Tell you, if you ever want to stop, plug from Morganton, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> www.morganton.com. But uh, place of Eli House. <laughs> <laughs> Birth by some <laughs> uh, But it was really nice talking to Liz Carroll because she had a, a very similar process of just like yeah. being able to sit. And again, I've always struggled with a bit of um, being too hard on the stuff that you create. And I think it's really important to just get into a headspace of. I say yes, anding mm -hmm. just all the fun stuff that comes into your brain. Mm. Um, I got to got to know a really wonderful Boron player um, named uh, Anna Colleton, mm -hmm. and she had a great line that's just been playing in my head: "Of um, if you can't make yourself dance to your own music, then how could you make somebody else?" Dance? So mm -hmm. she was like, "Always try to be, you know, always try to be dancing." And I was like, "That's so valid." I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love one. it. I just want to get back to this Ireland thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So, this is pretty incredible. We talked to Ben about this. But just take me through this. So you guys oh, are a large band. It's so fun. Six, seven-piece band. It's hard enough to play a gig in Raleigh. <laughs> or let's say you got a, a run of shows in Atlanta, Georgia. You guys are going to another country. Now, I know you've done it a couple times now. Just take us through that. It just seems so improbable to me. Um, some of it is the technological wizardry of Ben Noblet. Man, that man knows how to... Work a flip phone. Um, <laughs> he's great. He, he does probably it. still does have a flip oh, phone. Oh, he does. And he doesn't know T9, by the way. Uh, no way. But um, honestly, I think it was a lot of reaching out to a lot of places. And then we've been super lucky that, like, a lot of places want us. We've been super lucky to make a lot of you friends. You guys have a following there we now. Got, we do. And it's really wonderful. It was cool. I've, I've gotten to know um, a little collection of, of Irish kids. and. Yeah. They've told me before, they're like, it's kind of tricky here because you either know how to step dance and you'll kind of go and show off, or we really don't dance at shows so much. Yeah. And Tan and Sober's whole thing is, you know, not really, we're not very cool, but we're, we're very enthusiastic. <laughs> um, and so it's a lot of like, well, you don't have to look cool, but you should jump around and get sweaty because it's going to be more fun that way. And so I think people really react strongly to that. People love also hearing some of that trad music they grew up with played yeah. with, I think, so much enthusiasm. But are we just crashing on couches? Are we? I mean, I mean, because it's just a lot of. Oh, you know, there, I mean, just reality. There's a lot of costs associated with. There is, and a dirty, rotten secret that I shouldn't say about uh, say touring is that yeah. you're not most touring. You're kind of hoping to break even, or right, you right. know, no, it's not a big money sum, maker. I understand that, but it's um, really wonderful for just for growth. Yeah, um, and we have. Oh, it's so, I'm so used to being mean. Um, I have a wonderful friend and guitar player. That's right, a friend named Courtney Barefoot. Um, who's a post. Courtney's in the band. Yeah, she's technically in the band. Um, <laughs> I love I love Courtney. She's wonderful and does a lot of uh, Airbnb finding for us as well. Ah, so okay. she's been, I think, hunting and is on the, the hunt currently to lock down everything. So we just solidified all of our dates, even though we are uh, just, leaving okay. soon. All right. So it's gotten easier over time, but yes. I, I got to imagine the very first time you guys went over to Ireland, oh, another yeah. country, to play shows, that it was just a thrown together kind of mess, kind of a kind of like the Pogues of the, in the early days, maybe. Oh, just kind of a freight train, maybe off the rails a little bit, but a talented, but insane. That's what I'm envisioning. And now it's a well-oiled machine of professionalism, <laughs> I got to say. No, um, it has gotten a lot easier, I think, just knowing some venues, knowing some places to play. Yeah. Um, oh, Anything's man. Anything's easier the second time you do it. Oh, and the third, it's like, it's, uh, I've just been really lucky to get to go. I'm 
really excited. I'm pretty nervous. Um, this year, I've never been to a Cool Kid Festival yeah. or a big festival, and we're uh, we're playing Electric Picnic, which is kind of the nice. Irish Bonnaroo, yeah. which I think yeah. will be crazy and fun. Yeah. That's huge. Um, I think like Billie Eilish is playing this year, and um, Killers. the Killers, and and some good craft services. Oh, I hope, and I've just I've never seen the world of one of these like oh, oh Caroline's been telling me stories, mm. and I'm. Very excited just to explore and make friends. Yeah. Carolyn, do you tour with the band? Um, no, but like when uh, I used to live in Germany, and yeah. so when they came to Ireland mm-hmm. like two trips ago, I went over and visited. Yeah, and that's kind of when Eli and I sort of like met for real. Yeah, and, and actually hung out. We went to a Harry Potter pop up bar. Yeah, yeah it was super, super fun. fun. I, put, I love it. Put Ben Noblet's beer hair into a polo juice potion because I was like, you gotta. <laughs> and then I pretended to be him for multiple hours, and he yeah. still brings it up. Because I was so good. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Eli, you don't say a whole lot on stage, but I can tell you sitting here and talking to you for an hour, oh. per, your personality is what I imagined it was. Thank just you from so your much. expressions on stage. That's so kind. And just the way you play. You're very humble. Like when you'll I do a solo good. and then everybody will clap and you'll just be, you're almost embarrassed when people clap. Oh, uh, no. You're like this. What? Like that. You do that right there. No. That exact face. That we could just keep playing music. That's fine. So um, you, you are what I was hoping you were, which is an you. incredibly humble, incredibly talented musician. I'm glad you're here. That is so kind. And seriously, uh, thanks for having us both. It's, I wish I could. We, we could do another show. Come back. Oh, dude. Anytime yeah. you want us to ramble, we're five minutes um, away. I love it. Let's do a couple of plugs. Yeah. Where can oh, we find you online again? We'll, the first Saturday in September is a disc golf tournament. Now, you guys will be in Ireland because every year yeah. I invite the Tan and Sober Gentlemen. It's also a fundraiser. It's the first Saturday in September. Oh, that's brilliant. The Tan and Sober mm. Gentlemen will not be there, folks. I'm sorry. About mm, I'm so sorry. But, They're invited. Uh, but, uh, 20 bucks. Prizes. Food trucks, beer. We're having it at Pluck Farm this year. Oh, oh yes. Have you been out to Pluck Farm? Oh, that's incredible. Place. Our good friend. So check that out. WCOMFM.org forward slash classic if you're interested, Deej. Mm, I'm, I'm interested. And um, Caroline, what a, a a bonus pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm so, I could, we could do a whole show just with you. Oh, so yeah. Keep that in mind. But tell us again about your business. Anything else you want to just lob out there? Oh, yeah. So if you want to follow for some pretty stained glass pictures, you can find me on Instagram at studio underscore Adeline. And the profile picture is a cat. Mm-hmm. And then uh, or studio Adeline dot glass. And mm-hmm. can you just spell it? I think I spelled it wrong earlier. Oh, um, Adeline. So A-D-E-L-I-N-E. So right. studio Adeline dot glass is my mm-hmm. website. I can't even spell DJ. So <laughs> no. yeah. um, you, you did boof my last name yeah. uh, uh, when we've been episode. friends for like five years. Use of boof. But it was the yeah, first episode, thanks. and he still brings it up. It was uh, three and a half years I, ago. I, I do the same. <laughs> I'm both. Uh, seriously, Caroline, thank you so much for being here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, just like found, uh, I don't want to say found money. That sounds w- like just a, you know what I mean? Just a bonus yeah. to have Caroline It's like when here. you f- find like a, like a nice loaf of French bread that you weren't expecting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, exactly. oh I'm so, so bringing that up He's, later. That hey. might have made it weirder. We might have just <laughs> totally made the whole thing weird. All bread. the goodwill we just built with Caroline, we might uh, just destroyed. Caroline, Caroline is the best thing to happen to me in a very, very, very long time. Whoa, mm. that's sweet. No, don't, look, don't, don't repeat it. Hey, I need ratings. Say something, say something big. Oh. How about a huge gesture right here on the air? Oh, oh man, yeah. You know, I am one for huge gestures. I really like just putting a lot of emotional weight on my... Like, like, Let's get all the attention on Eli, folks, oh, please. please. Uh, oh, good. Folks outside, please, if you can just oh, pay yes. attention. Oh. Like, crowd getting closer. No, um, no I am super sure. excited, honestly, to teach more. And if anybody uh, needs some quality dancing music in their fine establishment, www.elihowellsviolin.com. I teach all ages, all experience levels, and pretty much any genre. Do you spell your last violin? name, please, as a... Uh, H O it's E L I H O W E L L S. Gotcha. Thank <laughs> you.